Hi everyone, welcome. This is the Microcast, episode number eight. So, if you don't know, if you are not up to speed yet, what we are doing here on LGBT Stories is every single Monday, there will now be a new episode in your feed. What that episode is, is the Microcast. If you don't know, we do have a Patreon page. And what I'm doing there is I'm releasing a commentary style show Basically, that is me talking about different LGBTQ topics. Guys, I have a big personality and I have a lot to say. And I wanted to start doing something like this with the show, but I really want to be authentic to what LGBT Stories is, and that's a story-based show. So every Monday, what I do is I take the microcast, which is already being released on Patreon, and I'm letting you guys have a little taste of what it's all about. If you like what you hear on Mondays, I really encourage you to head over to our Patreon page and help support us. And in turn, you guys get a brand new episode every single day. I'm already in talks with having some people that have been on the podcast in the past and have told their stories on the show to have them come on the microcast and have some conversation and things with them. This is a brand new show that's only being released on Patreon. If you want access to that, an episode every single day, go to patreon.com forward slash LGBT stories and that link will also be in the show notes. The show's already been running for a week on Patreon. It's super convenient. You can donate as little as one dollar a month and you get 30 episodes a month delivered right to you. So head over to our Patreon page for LGBT stories. You can download the app and just search LGBT stories, or you can go to the website that I just mentioned on the web. All right, everyone, let's get started with today's episode. So I want to have another conversation about Pete Buttigieg here, because look, he is hot in the news right now. He's pretty hot himself, by the way, but he's hot in the news right now. And there's just so much to talk about. I want to give him credit and I want to say he has done far more than any LGBTQ person in all of history has done in regards to climbing up the political ladder. This man is literally winning states that we probably couldn't have expected anyone LGBTQ to do. It is a phenomenal fleet. It's a phenomenal achievement and he deserves to be recognized for that. What I want to talk about today is something that I saw on YouTube and Facebook and I think everyone knows about. There was a woman who voted for Pete in the primary elections and once she found out that Pete was a gay man, she wanted to take her vote back. That's some bullshit right there. I already know. I get it. It's bullshit. It's stupidity. It's just like, come on now. What I want to focus on is the woman's response to her when she wanted to take the re- the vote back. Now, from what I understand, I saw this clip on YouTube from NBC News. From what I understand, the woman that informed this voter that he is a gay man, uh, I believe worked for Pete's campaign or worked at the polling office, something of the sort. It looks to me that she works for Pete's campaign. She's a a volunteer. She also mentions that she's a Christian. What I think is really awesome is her response to this woman. The way she responded was so elegant. It was not combative. It was loving. It was Christian-like. It was what I think we need to be doing when someone has a difference of opinions. Just because she doesn't want to vote for him anymore or wants her vote back, if that's even possible, doesn't mean that that person who supports Pete should beat her down verbally or whatever or discredit her. She's a human being too. Obviously, she didn't know. She's not the kindest person in my mind, but she didn't know. And What I love is that the woman who is volunteering with Pete, just her demeanor, it was so patient. 
And she even spoke up for Pete. And she said, you know, she teaches her son who was standing right there. She says, I teach my son that love is love. And she's right. Love is love. She says it shouldn't matter if it's a woman or a man or a straight person or a heterosexual, I'm sorry, or a homosexual person. It shouldn't matter. All that should matter is do you believe in what that person is promoting as they'll bring to the office. And that's powerful right there because the imagery of it all, this woman who doesn't clearly doesn't support uh, homosexuality, voted for someone who's homosexual, didn't know, but believes in his uh, political agenda, but then finds out he's gay and that sort of changes everything. I think it's powerful that if you separate what we quote hate about other people or disagree with other people and we look at the things that we do agree on and we look at what really can make change and we put aside our differences then think about what we can accomplish as a country now i applaud the woman who stood up for pete and stood up for all gay people lgbtq people and taught her son in that moment a lesson about standing up for people. I applaud her. The woman who wanted to take her vote back, I don't know what to say about you. You've got, you got some stuff to figure out. Here's my thing about Pete Buttigieg. In my opinion, to be on one of the loudest stages in the world currently, and to be an LGBTQ person, and for anyone who is clearly following the race enough that they're going out to vote and they don't know that you are a gay man, that is an issue. I am not saying that he needs to be parading around with the LGBTQ flag. I'm not saying he needs to come out to Madonna when he's going to campaign rallies. I'm not saying any of that. But the one thing that I have seen Pete do, and the only thing that I have seen him do in regards to LGBTQ topics or subjects or anything or display is hug his husband. I'm sorry, I've seen him do one other thing. He mentioned that he has a husband. Two things. There's no reason that someone should not know that he is gay. Because what happens is all of these people that need to see this need to hear it, need to see, oh my goodness, you're gay, but I agree with you. Then they can start having that internal dialogue with themselves. They can start saying, well, I don't agree with gay people, but I agree with this man. Hmm, let me look at that. But if Pete, this gay man who's on this huge stage, is not utilizing that to show people that though I am gay, I am just as good and valuable and worthy as you are. That's an issue. I still don't know what Pete's uh, policies for gay people are. Just because gay people are in a far better place than we have ever been doesn't mean we don't have struggles, doesn't mean that we need to be forgotten especially the trans community. My goodness. If anything, Pete needs to be talking about the trans community. These people are being killed every single day. They are being killed because they are trans. And this man has a stage where he's not even talking about it. If he was, that woman wouldn't not have known that he's gay. If Pete is on the ticket for the election, at the end, I am voting for him. I think he would be a good president, far better than what we have now. I think he's very intelligent. I think he can get good things done. But I need him to speak up about his homosexuality. I need him to talk to the little gay boys that are seeing these things on the TV as their parents are watching. I need him to represent for them. Just like the little black boys that saw Obama rise to power. 
rise to the top and in that White House. And they can have something to aspire to. A good role model. I need Pete Buttigieg to start doing that. So yeah, I need him to speak up more about his homosexuality because right now he's not doing enough. It's like I said in the past in the other episode I talked about this. My fear is that because Pete has the Christian vote right now, that he's afraid to talk too much about being Christian. I'm sorry, about being gay. Because he doesn't want to lose the Christian vote. And quite frankly, I wonder if that this woman who wants to retract her vote, if that's an example. But here's the thing, we can't live in that fear. You can't proclaim your Christianity and then shut down other parts of you because you want to win. It feels awful to even have to talk like this because I just don't like it. But is that what he's doing? If not, dude, speak up. Represent more. Talk about policy for LGBTQ people. Talk about trans rights and civil rights for LGBTQ people. Be more visible, dude. Haven't even seen him kiss his husband. Only a hug. It's the little things I think that will go so, so far. All right. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. Guys, tomorrow we have an amazing story. Amazing story from a guy named Michael Hennessy on the podcast. He's going to be talking about like what it was like being in a cult growing up in in college in a cult. And it's just, it's insane. I mean, it's at times hard to listen to, but it's a really, really amazing story about triumph and overcoming HIV and things like that. If you want more of the microcast, if you want to support LGBT stories, head over to our Patreon page. We're going to have episodes every day of the week, Monday through Sunday on the Patreon page. If you want more commentary, you want to hear more things from people outside of just myself, more commentary that I'm inviting onto the Patreon page's microcast, head over there, patreon.com forward slash LGBT stories. Thanks for listening today. Everyone, remember to keep loving one another.